Richard Dawkins evoca dois outros ainda mais conhecidos, Deus e Charles Darwin, embora não necessariamente nesta ordem de importância para o cientista e autor britânico que o milênio encontrou no Brasil. Quem não leu Deus, um delírio, ou O Gênio Egoísta, ou outros dos muitos livros do biólogo Richard Dawkins sobre religião ou evolução, poderia cometer a imprudência de achar que ele considera Darwin e Deus a mesma pessoa. Mas quem conhece a obra do ex-professor de Oxford, nascido no Quênia, sabe que ele considera essa mistura um pecado, ou melhor, um mal entendido, porque pecado não é palavra no vocabulário dele. Ciência e religião não se misturam no mundo de Dawkins. Ele endossa a primeira, rejeita a segunda. Uma postura audaciosa para trazer a um país tão religioso quanto o Brasil. Mas Dawkins não foge desses desafios e trouxe sua visão e experiência convidado pela organização da FLIP, a Festa Literária de Paraty, no Rio de Janeiro. Foi lá, durante a apresentação do professor Dawkins, que gravamos este milênio especial, que será exibido em duas partes. We will talk about evolution in, in a moment, but I would like to start off with your other book, which is uh, about God. And uh, this book has been translated in 31 different languages. It's been selling very well in many countries, including very religious countries uh, like Brazil. So the question comes to mind, do you think there are a lot of closet atheists out there hiding and embarrassed to expose themselves as non-believers? I certainly hope so, and I, and I do think so. Um, I have traveled a lot in the United States promoting the God delusion, and I particularly have traveled in parts of the United States that are described as the Bible Belt. And uh, so I was expecting to get a, a somewhat mixed reception, but in the event, everywhere I went, I got huge audiences, enormously enthusiastic, Uh, thousands of people all apparently agreeing with me that there is no God and we'd be better off not believing in one. Uh, and I think that exactly as you say, there are lots and lots of closet atheists who, at least in the United States, have never really dared to stand up and say that's what they are. So when I go to a place like Oklahoma, which is said to be a very religious state, 3,000 people showed up in one hall and they stood up at the end and I think they looked at each other and they realized I'm not alone. There are others like me, even in Oklahoma. Or even in Brazil, you could say. Where, where do you find the, the strongest resistance to, to your ideas, if not geographically, like uh, Oklahoma and the Bible Belt? Intellectually, where do you find the challenge? Well, I, I shouldn't leave you with the impression that I got no resistance in Oklahoma, by the way. The, there, was a, um, there was a congressman uh, in Oklahoma who tried to get my talk banned uh, and tried to censure the University of Oklahoma for inviting me. Um, so there was, uh, there was opposition from politically powerful forces. Um, serious opposition. I don't think there is a hell of a lot of serious opposition. Um, there is, I think the most serious criticisms I get are from people who say, I'm an atheist, but, and I'm getting very, very used to that phrase, I'm an atheist, but, and they accuse me of being impolite, discourteous, uh, not sufficiently sympathetic towards religious people. I think that's a misperception, by the way. Uh, I think that there is a general feeling, we've all been brought up to believe that you mustn't criticize religion. You cannot criticize religion. And therefore, even a fairly mild criticism of religion sounds aggressive, sounds strident, sounds shrill. Uh, actually, I would like to think that The God Delusion is quite a funny book. I don't know whether the humor shows through in translation, but I hope so.